everybody, it's Josh, the RV nerd of Bish's RV down here with a brand new floor plan from the Rockwood and Flagstaff group, or Rockstaff as I like to call them. This thing right here, like they've been dominating the front kitchen market. Rockwood and Flagstaff just are front kitchens at this point. So it's about time they put out a pretty decent rear kitchen model, I think. And they did some really nice things here. In the living room, we got some decent campsite window coverage. Uh, and you got a theater seat with, uh, it's either cuddle compliant or population controlling, depending on whether or not you want to put that armrest up or down. That's kind of dealer's choice a little bit right there. But it's staring straight at the campsite of the RV, out the windows with the TV right above it. The table down below too, just rock staff doing rock staff things, not just doing a common pedestal dinette, but the free floating kind of table. So if you Want to kick that table outside just have some open lounge space or fold it down into a sleeper you can do any of those things in here it all works out pretty nicely now like everything in the mini light micro light family we're just under 26 foot or less this one's 25 feet 10 inches right on that bubble right there and i think it's 7555 pounds gvw basically meaning Pretty much any tow package half ton is generally gonna handle this one very well, especially considering things like you got the better peace of mind with the Goodyear Endurance radials. You've got the torsion suspension uh, package there, not just torsion axles, but torsion suspension. That's a different thing. And TPMS for maximum peace of mind. One of the cool things they did this year, for the most part, they haven't really changed the equipment. They just came out with some new models, but they did bump up from a 1,000 watt inverter to an 1,800 watt inverter, specifically for folks who wanted to be able to run their coffee maker in the mornings. And I love that they continue to push that envelope. They're one of the first with standard solar, standard inverter. They continue to set the standards on so many things out there. And overall, I'm really excited to see what you think about this one. Hit that subscribe button if you like the new footage. Let's get going. Now you might look at this and say, it's a little bit like this RV or that RV. Like, let me name a couple. An Imagine 23 LDE, a Freedom Express 246 RKS. Uh, oh shoot, what is the Winnebago Mini has a rear kitchen with that's kind of a similar layout. And certainly, yeah, there's some similarities out there, but this one's not exactly like any of those. Uh, and one of the major things is I think this is one of the shortest and smallest of all of them I've seen. One of the cool things that you can always depend on when it comes to uh, a Rockwood Mini Light is that uh, the, 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 the mini light group tops out at uh, 26 feet, basically. They're all under 26 feet. In this case, 25 feet, 10 inches. And that means that this is a little bit shorter, a little bit easier to tow and park, especially with the better suspension package that this one runs on. Because there's a lot of nice RVs out there, certainly. I've covered quite a few of them here on this channel over the years. But very few of them actually, especially in the world of travel trailers, ride on any sort of treated, upgraded, enhanced suspension package. Most of the time, they ride on just a conventional leaf spring because the average travel trailer buyer doesn't have the experience to know the difference. So they just think that's what a trailer looks like and feels like when you drag it down the road. The thing is, it doesn't have to. There is a better way to go here. And I just ran right into the bedroom wall or bathroom wall. <laughs> Now, uh, up top, they did standardize, as I recall, the larger 15,000 BTU air. A lot of things that used to be optional are now just standards here. And I'm not using a tricky fisheye wide-angle lens. They do have a mini-vaulted ceiling in these, if you weren't aware. It's a six-and-a-half-foot sidewall, but even that little mini-vault, the way that they have this thing executed, it really helps kind of open the space up, especially once you get into the, uh, the shower area. Now, one of the things I think they did very nicely is uh, the entertainment and the way the seating plays in with it over here. Because you may have noticed earlier, when I, I actually sat down in that theater seat and gave you a look around in your point of view as an owner, you're staring straight at the campsite windows and uh, the entertainment center. You know, everything is exactly where you want it. Something else that's kind of cool is they have a ducted and louvered air conditioning system. In those fancy dance terms, what does that actually mean? What it means in English is that every air conditioner vent can turn and close individually. And they actually run dual ducted air. It's uh, like H ducted. You can see that there's two AC runs. Even in this little RV, they still do the same thing they do in their big RV. Their construction never changes throughout the family. Some of them are just a little bit bigger, fancier, and flashier. And some are a little bit smaller and I would say simpler, but what's funny is if you compare a Rockwood Mini Light to almost anything else in this class, you'll see that Mini Lights have more and often better equipment. Like they're, they're carpetless now. That was a marine woven floor in the slide. Instead of the common knee knocker dinette post, they give you something that's a little more multifunctional. The frameless windows are going to be standard here. Now, admittedly, those do not provide the best airflow, but that's why they use the big XL vent fans like uh, in the bathroom that you're going to see to help compensate and overcome for that. 
they were one of the very first to start including standard from the factory shades in the door. And you can see, uh, you might notice how like every manufacturer does shades from the bottom up now. That's because the door comes from a shared supplier. And the supplier said, we're gonna do it one way. You guys figure it out. And you people at home said, that's how we'd like it. So that's how it came about. You've also got things like solid surface countertops, a bigger 22 inch oven, which is far less susceptible to having hot cold spots in that oven. So you actually cook stuff far more evenly. And something you can't see, the inverter. Now, previously, these had a 1,000-watt inverter, which was still a 1,000 watts more than most brands had by default. But Rockwood has recently bumped that up to 1,800 watts. So any of the inverter-looped outlets uh, will would, would allow you to run light-duty appliances even up to things like a coffee maker now. And I see that they've also updated their little power tower to have household uh, uh, USB Type A and a USB Type C plug, which I think is really, really handy. Very useful kind of stuff right there. Now, one of the other things I've noticed is they've gone to that flip-flop ACDC uh, refrigerator door where it can go either direction, which I really like. I think those things are very cool. What's awesome is they've gone to an updated version of it where like uh, the old ones, if you opened the door from the left side and then you failed to fully close it and try to open it from the other side, you could literally pull the door off the, the, the fridge totally and like drop it on your foot or dent your flooring or hit your dog or something. Well, that's not a thing anymore, basically. It's it's the don't drop the door door is the best way I think I can say it. Now, another cool thing they do that you can't see, anything in this RV that is structural and or load bearing is going to be aluminum framed. What that means is, yes, the whole body of the RV, it's a six-sided full aluminum skeleton construction. The walls, the roof are laminated. Um, the, the dinette, though, the bed, these things that are going to be people load bearing, those are also a welded aluminum cage so that they can be able to hold up to maximum weight. And I love the extra little details. I tell you what, I would probably be sitting over here on this side of the dinette because the way you can curl your legs under you. When I sit down, I like to curl my legs down and lean forward probably because my big belly forces me to do that if I want to be up to anything. But that's just me. Now, I guess we're at the perfect position. Uh, you, you can't make eye contact with the person on the toilet, but you can certainly, if you don't close the door, see what they're doing. And to give you a look around here, at a glance, it looks like the shower door's too, and like you're going to be elbow banging. But remember, the shower door is a tri-triple partition, basically, and it can slide around. So, uh, you know, you can get yourself uh, a little more comfort there when you need to, and you don't have to get up off the toilet to do it. There's also those extra little details, like the fact that they put in that little, like, soap and sh uh, body wash kind of caddy right there. So you don't have to bend over to grab all your stuff, which in a shower like this can be tricky, although it is a nice rectangular shower. And you may notice that mini vaulted ceiling, again, is just enough that a person like me, a little bit over six foot, can stand in here and not have to have their head up in the bubble, which I think is great. And they have maintained the use of their big XL vent fans, or as I love to call them, the Fajita Friday Fume Fighters right there. They are fighting the fumes. Now, interesting thing in this mini light series, you can option a second one of those into the bedroom, which is something that we're actually going to see. Actually, if you give me a minute, we're going to see a couple different uh, bedroom options here. Now, one thing I like about this, this is a walkthrough middle bath. And theirs is not quite as wide uh, as some of the other ones I've seen, but they included some really nice storage in here. But that's a good example of what I like to refer to as Rockwood doing Rockwood things. They have almost always had some of the very best bathrooms uh, in the business. Now this TV over here, that is another one of those available options. And what's interesting is it actually still has an integrated DVD unit. And you may have noticed that little red wire up there. This is a 12 volt TV. Basically all of your Rockwood Entertainment is now 12 volt powered, meaning battery powered. So if you're in a park, yes, it's, go it's going to run just fine. The, the park power gets converted into 12 volt by your converter, uh, appropriately enough. And um, you know it'll, it'll run all those things, like your lights and your fans, those are also 12 volt things. But you don't necessarily have to have park power now. Very nice for you know getting away from things uh, a little bit sometimes, assuming you have TV connection when you're in the middle of nowhere. Now, <clears throat> it's a little bit interesting. They don't do a drawer on that side uh, because the closet slide, like it would, the drawer would bump into it. It wouldn't open. So here's a thought I have. Here's a little tweak I would love to see them do. I'm, I think there's an empty pocket of air down in there. I would like it if this side tilted up 
and allowed for some storage down in there. What do you think about that idea? That's just my two cents. Now, your headboard pockets or uh, power outlets, those are uh, inverter uh, powered. So, again, if you're going to be doing an overnight stayover, uh, you'll, you'll be able to, like, say, run a little standing fan or phone charger or something like that if you need to. And, again, the second uh, Max Air fan that we're looking at here, that is a uh, available option in these. Now, your mini lights are 30 amp service only. They do not have any sort of allowance for a, uh, a 50 amp service and or second air conditioner, so keep that in mind. And I don't have the shade drawn, but there is a full privacy shade in that full viewing window in the bedroom door. But I like how they gave us a bedroom door and a window and uh, a, a venting window beside that. So we've got double viewing in here plus the front windshield, which does have a roll down blackout shade, just like you see in the living room. And there's even little magnet holdbacks just above that. So it's not constantly floating above your head overnight and bumping into you. Now I like to share the good with the bad, something you might not like. This is a Camp Queen. The Mini Light series, they are typically shorter and they're trying to keep everything, you know, again, under 26 feet and there just wasn't enough room for a true queen in here. Could you put one in? Yes, you're gonna do the butt scoop boogie to get around it, but it can work. Over on this side though, they didn't have a closet slide to contend with, so they were able to include a drawer over there in that one, which I think is awful darn handy. Now you can also see, like you haven't seen hanging wardrobe storage because this RV comes with that big uh, like closet slide over there. So you've got dual hanging closets and a dresser built into the slide in the bedroom instead of being a big bulky in your way space because that is a tight confined room. So they found a way to give you a lot of storage without adding a lot of size, really, length to the RV at least. Um, overall though, I'm just eyeballing it. I'm looking at the slide. I'm looking at the bathroom door. I do think this one's going to have what I call two-stage travel access, but let's find out. And that does appear to be the case. Now, one of the cool things over here is this slide is a rack and pinion slide. What that does mean is that if you need to open it only partially, like say just that much, and the way that they mounted the bathroom door, how it opens inward, you could crack the slide and theoretically slip slide through there, uh, like TLC doing the shoop, shoop, shoop. But neither here nor there with that. Remember that you do have your refrigerator right by the door, and with it being that, you know, it opens either direction AC, DC fridge door, basically, it's nice to just pop in and grab a drink, which is really handy when you're at your campsite too. But like I said, we do have a dual entry door. And if you're kind of freaked out about a door in your bedroom, remember that big red paddle switch right here. It is uh, a little bit of a deadbolt so you can have some privacy or, I don't know, just kind of share the experience with the neighbors. Not sure exactly what your uh, preference is. But the front door here, this one, even when the slide closes, it doesn't interfere with the bed. So if you're going down the road and you need to take a nap or you need to take a crap. Door number two is going to get you there. Now, my apologies in advance for making the fellow over here from Terran Axle feel very uncomfortable. Terran is a, uh, a newer axle supplier that you're going to find on a lot of Forest River products uh, moving forward. But neither here nor there, we're looking at the new Mini Light. For the foam, basically, like I said, the features, the equipment, the um, the construction has not changed, and I am not upset about that. This is a six-sided, full aluminum cage product. Uh, the only part of this RV, really, that's not laminated is the floor, because they wanted to make sure they could avoid potential generation of soft spots over time. So they went to a, it's still an aluminum studded floor, but it's now a 5 8 tongue and groove ply, plywood floor deck. And they've been doing that for a number of years now. It, it weighs a little bit more, but it's, it's funny. They just don't have soft floor problems anymore like some of those i don't know early 2010s generation might have it's just kind of not a thing now uh they did stick with the monochromatic look from last year i still kind of miss the orange but i don't know I mean, this is kind of growing on me it does look clean it does look really good and it's going to mesh with a lot of trucks very nicely now this one is like a lot of the bigger mini lights where it's almost a step in between a mini light and uh, a rockwood ultra or a flagstaff micro and flagstaff super and that it does have a miniature drop frame and that is giving us us a huge front storage compartment so that if Aunt Edna croaks on the Clark W. Griswold family vacation, you do have the perfect place to stuff her in here because who wants to strap Aunt Edna to the roof? <laughs> Not me, not me, although the fully walkable roof on this could certainly support her. Now, given some kudos here, the fact that like they still have the magnet holdbacks for that big swinging door so it's not banging around in the breeze is nice, but it is actually hiding something for us. 
cue the Legend of Zelda sound as I open that. The, the little solar on the side prep plug here. So this RV by default has 200 watts of solar on the roof and they're using a charge controller that could handle uh, two additional panels. So, you know, 400, 600 watts I'm told you could put up here. Now I don't typically see uh, a triple panel system coming from the factory, although uh, I do see a lot of the double panels coming from the factory on these. And their, uh, their power package, their expanded thing with like the 12 volt, you know, air conditioner to run, you know, when you're untethered, that is becoming more common through their lineup. Some people have asked me like why isn't it just on all of them well it takes time because you have to literally fundamentally change the way the rv is wired and that takes some engineering time you don't just slap that together now when there's that much voltage going through that is a fire risk and that's a danger now it's not an, a truly independent suspension but notice how you don't see a leaf spring chuck between the two right there these are torsion um, axles with a torsion suspension system. And that difference in suspension makes a huge difference in ride and handling. It will help this thing ride a lot smoother. And I can't get into the full technical details of it here in a little like, you know, product flyby. But uh, basically what it's going to do is if you go around a sharp corner and you're turning right, most RVs want to lean left and kind of, you know, drag you off the road. This one's actually going to try to do the opposite. It's actually going to try to lean with you into the turn so that everything works out great. Um, again, we are in a live dealer display. We may have a couple guests at times. That's just going to happen when I'm writing the main thoroughfare here. I do really like this. I, this was kind of a surprise. A little hot, cold outside utility shower port right here by the door. So if you want to, you know, rinse off your sandy little feet before you step inside, that was kind of cool. Now, we are up close and personal. Let me slide around the side here. Still spare tire on the back. They are still using a Goodyear spare. A lot of manufacturers that run Goodyears don't run a Goodyear spare tire. That's an interesting little thing a lot of people don't know to look for. The uh, accessory hitch on the back there, if you want to, you know, add a bike rack or anything like that, you're all set to go. And of course, they still have that always on uh, ladder to get you up to that fully walkable roof. And I am backing into a table or a chair or something, and I hope nobody's sitting there. Well, this is a very unexpected special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Cena. Okay, if you look over there, you see a normal Rockwood Mini Light Flagstaff Micro Light roof. But when we back up, you might notice something a little different, a little interesting. The one that I'm standing on has a fiberglass roof skin. Uh, is this something that they're switching to? And the answer right now, surprisingly, is no. And you might be thinking, why not? That sounds really awesome. Well, they agree. They're testing the idea, but what they've found so far is that with their, their exterior vaulted roof, it's not holding and bonding well with their existing uh, vacuum laminated processes. So for the current time being, it will still have the same conventional roof skin on top of it that you've seen from a number of years, which does just fine. By far and away, the seals are easily the least common denominator, and whether it's a fiberglass or some other petroleum-based roof skin, the seals are still definitely the weakest link in the chain. So you're not really losing anything, but I want to be sure that I clarify verify that right now. What they do in the future, I don't know. They said that they're experimenting. They might keep uh, trying a few things, but if it doesn't work out, they're not going to put something out there that they feel is substandard or potentially problematic. Now, as long as we're up here, you can obviously see how our, our big XL vent fans, how they only use the Fajita Friday Fume Fighters, those come with the roof vent covers. And uh, right here, we're looking at their factory standard 200 watts of solar. But again, you can get these right from the factory, like with a second one of those. And now with an 1800 watt inverter, they're starting to be able to do some pretty decent things untethered. I'm not telling you this is some indefinite off-grid warrior kind of camper, but compared to other people in this class, their standard stuff is pretty much the best you find out there. So thanks again for tuning in and my apologies to the fellow from the Axle Company over here. He's constantly about 36 times said, uh, hey, am I in the way? Do I need to move? And I said, no, you're just doing your thing. You're fine. Why wasn't it 37? Well, because I didn't ask that many times. <laughs> or he didn't, whatever the case may be. Anyway, uh, this is a new model. We may not have any in stock at the time this footage rolls out, but if you check the links in the video description, you'll be able to see where we have one in stock and what we're asking on a given day, or you could scan that QR code on the screen uh, on your phone. And you know, if you're just watching from TV, I've found that there's a lot of people doing that that can't necessarily comment and let me know they weren't able to check pricing. Well, there you go. Now it's one step easier. Little things like that, doing what we can to make your shopping and buying and ownership experience a little bit better that's our goal here help you find your second camper the first time around and if you like that hit that subscribe button like our video we'll catch you next time take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone